Do I have your attention? 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 Is you taking notes? Hey you guys, it's your boy Simply Food by TY, and today you guys, we're gonna be working on making ourselves some collard greens. Now, of course, the first thing that we want to do is focus on getting them nice and clean. So as you guys can see, these are a big leafy green. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the leaf and remove it from the stem. Now, the actual stem of collards can be extremely tough. However, it does hold a lot of the nutritional value. So if you would like, you can save a few of those and then you can add it to your stock pot in a few moments. That's completely up to you. But actually cooking with them, it just takes a really, really, really long time to cook down. So once you remove them, all you're going to simply do is just roll up the leaf all together. And then you're just going to rip it up into pieces. Honey, ain't nobody got time to be sitting down and taking no knife and cutting them up into pretty pieces. Ain't nobody got time for that. Go on ahead and get all your children and the grandkids and tell them to come and sit down and have them sit around and you check them out, get rid of the stems and then have them rip them up, make it a family event. So you're just gonna continue to repeat that process and go on ahead and remove all of the stems. Once again, like I said, there are a lot of nutritional uh, values to the stems, but because they are so extremely tough, you tend to not really want to cook with those. Now, you guys, I'm gonna tell you, Cleaning collard greens is so extremely important. I'm going to tell you why. It honestly does not matter if you have the best recipe, the best seasonings, the best smoked meats possible, you know, the uh, uh, you know, any of those things. None of that matters, because at the end of the day, if you did not make sure that your collard greens were cleaned and thoroughly cleaned, you are going to end up with mud in the water. And that's not even like a figure of speech. You literally are going to end up with mud in your water. Don't be fooled by how beautiful these green leafy leaves look. They might look pretty clean, but I promise you, there is so much sand engraved in them. So that's why it's so extremely important to make sure that you're taking the time to actually clean them. Now, if you, one, aren't able to find organic collard greens, in your local grocery store. And if you're choosing to use, you know, the glory greens that come in the bag over by the produce area, that is completely fine. But even with those, you guys, definitely still take the time to make sure that you guys are washing them because I promise you, they are not going to take the time to properly go through each and every single leaf like you'll be able to at home. So, you know, you really, truly want to keep that in mind because, like I said, there's so much sand and so much dirt in collard greens that if you don't truly take the time to clean them, I promise you, it's all going to show up in the end result. And if you've ever experienced somebody's collard greens and they weren't clean, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, like I said, right now, as we're continuing on, we're just going to continue to roll these up and then, you know, just rip them up into the little shreds. Now, because collard greens do cook down so much, I got about six or seven bunches of collards and that would be enough to feed anywhere between four to five people. If you're doing this for Thanksgiving, I would definitely say make sure you get yourself way more than that because collard greens... To me, collard greens cook down like spinach. It just turns into absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? So if it depends on how many people you want to feed. Like I said, this was about five or six um, heads of collards that I had, and it would feed about five or six people. So now that we've gotten all of our leafy greens broken down, you've gotten those stems set to the side, go on ahead and make sure that your sink is extremely clean. And then you're gonna fill it up with ice cold water. It's important to make sure you guys that your water is nice and cold because you don't wanna start the process of cooking your collards yet. So to keep a nice crisp to them, go on ahead and make sure that you have your water nice and cold. 
So what we're going to get ready to do now is we're going to focus on getting an abrasive in here and a solution to help speed up the process of cleaning your greens. Now, I, in my own personal opinion, I think kosher salt is the way to go. I don't really understand table salt because the grains are too small. Kosher salt, the grains are much bigger, so it allows you to really rub up against the um the collards much harder and it and you'll be able to feel that salt really rub up against the leaves which helps take all of the sand and dirt off and as you guys can see the water when you first start to clean them will have like a tint of brown and a tint of green and that goes to show you know how truly how dirty these greens actually can be um but i'm gonna tell you you know collard greens you guys are one of, if not to me, one of the best super green foods that you can ever have. First things first, it can definitely help people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, you can achieve better levels of blood sugar, lipids, and insulin. And also, it really does help reduce inflammation. And if you're trying to get in some extra fiber, one cup of boiled collard greens provides nearly 8 grams of fiber. Which is, you know, pretty awesome because I feel like we kind of don't get enough fiber in so we're just going to continue to rub these down and what i also like to do is i also add in vinegar so i add in you know maybe about one fourth of a cup to almost a half a cup to a vinegar now i'm going to repeat this process three times so each time i'm going to do salt and vinegar i'm going to drain it repeat it again salt and vinegar drain it repeat it again i'm going to do that three times by no means are your greens going to come out vinegary, nor are they going to come out salty. Because what's going to happen is after that third time of cleaning it, I then drain the water and I refill it with just cold water and nothing else. I let it sit in the cold water. That way you can start to wash away any of the residual salt that might be left on your collards. And I drain it and then I refill it once again the last time with just water again so that's five times total three times of you cleaning it and two times of you letting it just soak in the water now i know to a lot of people that might seem like overkill but i promise you if you have ever experienced dirty collard greens or somebody serving you collard greens that were not properly cleaned honey you will know exactly what i am talking about you know what i mean now also um sometimes people like to mix they're collard greens, and that is completely fine. You know, some people do collard greens and turnips um, and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, that's completely up to you. Um, the next thing that I want to focus on, because we're about to get to the stage where we're going to start making our stock, is in this recipe, you guys, I'm going to be using ham hocks. And as some of you guys may or may not know, that is a very traditional meat that a lot of people from the South use when we used to cook our food. However, ham hocks does have a very high sodium count. So by all means, you can use whatever smoked meat product you would like. You can use smoked turkey necks, you can use smoked turkey legs, you can use whatever you want. The only reason why I'm bringing this up is because it is important for you to understand that if you're going to be using the ham hocks, you then need to be mindful of how much additional salt you're going to add because I promise you, the ham hocks are going to take care of all of the salt for you. Actually, I can just say this right now. I actually did not end up adding not one stitch of salt to this entire recipe. I just, I didn't need to do it. You know what I mean? To where if you're going to use a smoked turkey, you might need to add a little bit. So just take that into account when you start to move to the next process, which is making your uh, pot liquor or, you know, your, um, your stock. So let's head on over and let's get that going. So as I said, I'm using ham hocks and I'm using, I'm using about four of them. Now these ones here aren't that meaty. When I have my collard greens, you guys, I'm not too keen on a crap ton of meat. I actually like just enough. So this is more so for the fat content to bring out the flavor. There's a few things that I also like to add to add flavor, which is a handful of garlic. You're gonna add in just enough water 
to cover over top of the ham hocks themselves. And then there's two other ingredients that I like to add that people don't add, but it's just my thing. I like to add carrots, which adds natural sweetness to the stock and also celery. You will not be eating the actual garlic, the carrots or the celery. That's just to help season up the stock. So what we've just added in just then was four tablespoons of the Better Than Bouillon chicken base. And we're gonna actually also add in one whole shallot. You don't have to chop that up. Put the top on it, you guys. And then we're gonna let that cook for three hours, three hours. And as you guys can see, it has drastically reduced, but it's left you, oh my God, I'm telling you, it has left so much flavor in that pot and like i said the carrots are not going to be in the final dish the celery is not going to be in the final dish all of those things of garlic are not going to be in the final dish that was just to add actual flavor to the stock and the good thing is you guys because you cook this on about a medium high for three hours the shallots have kind of broken down to almost nothing as well as the garlic it kind of almost just dissipates it kind of just goes away and it just becomes a part of the sauce which is exactly what you want so once you have all of that out you want to go on ahead and start adding in your collards by all means if you have to add them in little by little if your pan is not large enough that is completely fine um but like i said i didn't really have that much but i just wanted to show you guys here see how clean that water is that water is running clear. The only thing left in there is the little bits from the collards. That's how you know that they were properly washed. Go on ahead and put the top on those and let's, walk, let's work on the meat. So as I said, these are your ham hocks right here. Now, ham hocks have a lot of fat on them. But if you cook them long enough, you can honestly just take a fork. And as you can see, the bone will just come right out. Now... Like I said, these particular ones that I have here did not have a lot of meat on them, which is completely fine with me because I don't like too much meat in my collars. I actually like the taste of collard greens themselves, but you want to have a little bit. But as you guys can see, I'm trying to be very gentle with removing the bone from the fat because those strips of fat that we have laying there, honey, that's going to come in handy real soon. But like I said, those carrots and stuff, throw that to the side, honey, you ain't eating that. That is not going inside of our actual collard greens. That was just to add flavor. The carrots added a little bit of sweetness. Um, so like I said, you're going to remove your bone. Now, if you would like, um, you can take one of those bones and just sit it directly inside of the pot. Like that's what I'm going to end up doing with that one there. I just set it directly inside of the pot with the collard greens because, of course, the more water goes into that bone the more flavor will be extracted out of it and it just adds way more flavor you know so you don't have to add them all um but once you get these pulled apart get all of your meat taken apart then you can discard the rest of it let's get back to our greens so what we're going to do now is we're going to add in about a tablespoon of garlic powder we're also going to add in about a tablespoon of onion powder and then we're going to add in about a half a tablespoon to about a tablespoon of black pepper. That kind of depends on your liking. If you like more, by all means, add more. Now, this is crushed red pepper flakes. Now, I like a tinch of a kick to my collard greens. So that, that can be dependent upon what you like. And then I added three capfuls of apple cider vinegar. Y'all, don't use that white vinegar. That white vinegar ain't got no taste. And then I added one and a half tablespoons of sugar. By no means is this going to make your greens sweet at all. All that simply does is cuts some of the saltiness um, from those ham hocks that was soaking in that water. And as you guys can see, there's not that much water in there. Y'all, don't overdo it with the water. Your greens don't need to be floating around in, you know, a million cups of water. You know what I mean? So don't add any more liquid. That's all that you need because they're going to break down. And then I add in about one and a half to two tablespoons of Maggie Polio of the, the chicken base. 
And then I like to add shallots to mine. I know that might be a bit bougie, but for some reason, shallots to me just have a way better flavor component than just regular old onions. And then of course, we've now just added in our meat. And as you can see, it wasn't that much, but for this amount of collard greens, it's just the perfect amount. So after you guys get all of that mixed in, um, you want to keep an eye on the temperature because now you're going to let this cook for about an additional hour to an hour and a half, depending upon what you like the texture of yours to be like. Um, I would say have your temperature on about a simmer. I uh, definitely don't have it on a boil because then they're just going to turn into a soggy mess. Now, if you like yours well, well done by all means, but you also don't want to cook them too fast. So kind of keep an eye on the temperature. But before we cook them, Remember how I told you that we was going to use that fat? Honey, throw that fat on there and put the top on it. Let it cook for about an hour and a half and my God on today. Do you see what I'm looking at? Well, I tell y'all, these collard greens turned out so delicious by letting those three pieces of fat just sit on the top. All of the juices went to dripping. You know what? I'm hungry. I got to go. I love you guys so much, and I hope y'all tried this recipe. Bye, honey. Simply Food by T.Y.